All right, we got a new video from Giguk, Best of Anime 2022. It looks like it's gonna be the uh, kind of like a top uh top list, the list of his top anime of 2022. I'm excited to see what. What was his favorite? Let's check it out. Once again, we've reached the start of a new year, but before we say goodbye to 2022 completely, I gotta say... We got some pretty great anime, didn't we? Oh, made it in the Heavy hitters oh, in almost every genre of anime. Massively anticipated titles finally dropping and having the impact we thought they would. Big franchises continuing to another season and hitting even harder. We even got old franchises getting resurrected. Last year was pretty nutty, ever. actually. Yeah. 2022 was absolutely stacked. But what else happened in the world for us weebs? After 25 years, Ash oh, finally Ash, broke yep. his curse by becoming the Pokemon World Champion. News so big, it was reported like a real sporting event as the world celebrated, <laughs> allowing him to finally retire at the ripe old age of 11. Italy had a surprising <laughs> visitor as a certain promiscuous video of Tifa oh, Lockhart right. was accidentally played at their set. That's The only time you'll ever see Italians more passionate than their pasta when asking for the sauce. This forever immortalized <laughs> Tifa in Italy law, becoming only the second person since Julius Caesar to be violently stabbed at a Senate in Rome. All right, what else was there? I uh, got the climax to the biggest romance arc oh, of my nice. own life. <laughs> 2022 was a bit of a quiet year in terms of anime news. We didn't get any particularly big shockers or controversies. Even anime didn't give us any wildly bad stinkers compared to previous years. But uh. what we got instead was some bloody great anime. This year was brutally hard to narrow down my list of favorites so I don't spend two months making an hour long video. Normally I try to omit sequels and continuations unless it does something new or notable for me to talk about, which makes it messy because so many of them did this year. This is going to be the longest True. list in a while so I had to be cut through if I didn't have much to say. My Hero Season 6 is the best My Hero has been in a long time, but still not quite good enough yet. Jojo had his hype murdered by Netflix, but it's still more great Jojo. Bleach's Return has been an absolutely what, uh, incredible sight to witness. Preview. I'd forgotten Bleach could get this hype, but the last time I talked True. in depth about the OG Big 3, this happened. And I don't want to risk that for a video this big. Attack on Titan is also continuing to stamp its mark down on anime history. We got more incredible twists, more incredible hype, more Varen being like, Must you kill the child? Amazing mission complete. <laughs> that right there is why you're the best, boss. I'm just waiting for it yeah, to finally learn mass genocide, what the dude, hell yeah. final means in final season before I fully pass judgment. Which is why I'm glad this next season is called Attack on Titan. Final, final season, season part final edition, three, part one. Yeah, and it's gonna have two parts, yeah. Let's just get started. But before moving on to all the great shows last year, who doesn't love a good snack while watching some great anime? Well, today's sponsor has got you Boxu. covered because it's Boksu. Guys, if you know anything about Japan, you know the food here is godly. And Boksu is my favorite Japanese snack box. They work with local businesses from all over the country to bring you the best Japanese snacks every single month. And as you can see, this month dope. we're getting a super special pretty box because Sakura season is almost upon us. Yes, this month's theme is Sakura in Kyoto. I'm going to be honest, one of the hardest parts of being sponsored by Boksu is that I have to actually wait to try out these snacks on camera instead of just opening it up and trying out straight when I receive it. All right, let me see what looks good this month. I have not had a Sakura flavored mochi yet, so let's see what this tastes like. Ooh, that smells really good. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty damn good. I'm a bit sad there's only one of those in the box. This one is the Kyoto Sable Ume. I always love the different types of biscuits they send me. And I'm excited to try this one. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> this is dangerous. Mm. Thank God there are two in these because I was afraid there were just one. Honestly, guys, top tier snacks every single time. This box is going to be entirely gone by the end of the day. Each box is completely packed and it comes with a booklet that teaches you all about the snack's unique flavor and where they come from. So guys, if you want to introduce yourself to Japanese food culture or just find the perfect gift for your fellow Honestly, weeds, seems Boxu like a, has got you covered. That'd be this a, is pretty much uh, perfect for all the shows going to be talking about if you want to snack on something. Food box so, thing that I would actually for? subscribe Click for. That link in the description and use code GIGAK at checkout for $15 off your first Boxu purchase. Thank you very much to Boxu for sponsoring me this month. Back to the Probably video. Probably pretty pricey though if it's like international shipping. Venus life, Venus life. Yeah, close Venus enough. Life. <laughs> when I think about watching golf, I think... Golf is one of those things I love to play, but when I watch it, you'd have a better chance of waking up a coma patient. So Birdie Wing came in with the monumental task of tackling Birdie the Wing. impossible golf problem. Story. How do we make this. golf fun to watch? 
Gay girls, isn't it? Not golf enough for you? How about we add special golf attacks? Golf with guns. An underground golf syndicate with golf set of Kaiba in Golf Battle City where of golfers course. have a golf duel to the death. One moment you could be watching a girl oh, dude, look at that bend. moving train and the next a dude is being assassinated Wait, on what? highway via <laughs> rocket launcher. This anime is about as anime as anime gets and if you're willing to give it a chance, it will golf you so hard you will be golfed into submission. This was a bloody wild ride from start to finish and by the end of it, you'll be excitedly singing along to the catchy opening every time. <laughs> Every season, we oh, get one or two new anime with like the that. stupidest the fucking opening? concept of all time. Like they had a dartboard of random ideas that they tried to crash into each other and going, Hey guys, what if this works? What's incredible is when it actually does. Is a Baby Kong machine Kong or what? your boy Kong Ming, yes, that's the official translated your boy title, Kong. asks what happens if legendary Chinese tactician Zhuge Liang gets reborn to modern day Tokyo to become the manager of an EDM idol and leads the girl to stardom using the art of war. It's an absurd oh, idea that looks even more absurd on screen, but all it took was one look at the opening for me to go, you son of a bitch, I'm in. It instantly grabs you with this infectious Animation charm and holds on tight. Whether you're seeing a breakdown of how ancient and war tactics can be used to gain Twitter followers or watching a historic Chinese figure spitting some fire bars in a rap battle. I know what we're all jokingly typing. <laughs> Best rapper since Eminem, wrong. Yeah, Eminem's alright, but has he ever roasted a dude so hard he fucking dies? You live murder action. with guns. Kong Ming murders with emotional damage. But past the bizarreness, it never forgets the beating heart behind it. Like Kong Ming, we're cheering for every step closer Aiko takes towards stardom. Her journey into music was so well done, you forget the absurdity of the premise. And that's the real heart of this show, because I can't even begin to describe the unbridled satisfaction of cheering for this girl to succeed, and by the end, seeing her move closer to achieving her dream weight. Did I just get tricked into watching an idol anime? What's wrong with idol animes? <laughs> yeah, Keanu Reeves is cool, but have you ever sat there and asked yourself, is there anything we can possibly do to make John Wick even better? Gay girls, isn't it? Licorice Recoil oh, takes a simple approach. You like cute girls, you like guns, we're gonna give cute girls some guns. Of course. So what happens if you add beautifully adorable anime girls into a gun-toting spy action thriller? Well, you get something like this. Sakana! Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. <laughs> Somehow we have a show that attempts to straddle the perfect middle ground between Moe Slice of Life and Hardcore Action. You have a dark terrorist plotline where the stakes are high, people are getting murdered, there are intense gunfights straight out of a Max Payne game. And then we cut to a scene where the girls are like... <laughs> This deserves to be on the list, if not for giving us the most precious duo to come out of 2022. But if you're still like, okay, but how is this any better than John Wick? Well, um... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. If I need Those are some body, thick thighs, dude. It. How old is she? 14? <laughs> Marin is still the best girl of 2022. Uh, okay, yeah. It's not because she reminds me of my wife. Hey guys, it's your girl. <clears throat> They're the same picture. Oh, Blue Lock, all right. This year, we were graced with World Cup Fever, which was a blessing because we got not one, but two great oh, football oh, she, anime. Yeah, yeah. Introducing Weebs to the wonderful experience of watching a bit of footy at the pub. A bit of footy at the pub. You can't miss this. You can't miss. You can't Having miss. a bit of answer. He's bloody missed it. What a brat. What a brat! Awashi was probably the most overlooked sports anime this year. Production IG just kill it every freaking time they do a sports show and this was no exception. Showcasing the high quality they've done before with Haikyuu and Kuroko and bringing that hype to football. Then Blue oh, came along and went, the same? Look at this baby shit now, nah, this is real football. None of that friendship bullshit, we're doing a football battle royale. Blue Lock is pretty... Being selfish and egotistical. This it's pretty every intense. every cardinal rule previous sports anime had set up and was some of the most fun I had all year. But you That's know some what very dramatic. Anime than both these anime this year? 
the World Cup itself, baby. Upset after upset, we had the hype, we had the drama, we had one of the greatest World Cup finals of all time. Messi securing his status as the absolute GOAT. Mbappe carrying France. Boeing 747 carrying Belgium and Germany. England being... Harry <laughs> Kane penalty is inevitable. He scores 100 times out of 100. England, Japan <laughs> keeping the ball one millimeter in play to score the winning Ooh. goal against Spain. Just what the hell were the script writers thinking? Yeah, this was actually the best sports anime of the year. Fuck these other two. There is no passion, there is no vision, there is no aggression in this football club. <laughs> <laughs> Stellar action, compelling plot lines, interesting characters, all reasons we- I'm kind of wondering what his number one is going to be. Is it going to be- is he going to go uh, kind of basic and say it's either Chainsaw Man or Bleach? Is he going to be a little more creative and say uh, Mob Psycho? Or is he going to throw, throw something completely Watch new the out there? I'm, we I'm, I'm, I don't do. know. But I ask you, can a show be worth watching solely for vibes? Yes. Call of the Night is the anime that speaks to the soul of anyone who's ever been a night owl in their lives. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. Come on, it's 3 a.m. We're in fucking degen huh? hours now. What are you still doing awake watching YouTube videos? Hey, man, it's light out, dude. What are you taking? Liam. There's just Liam. something comforting about wandering the normally bustling streets in the dead of night. Unless you're in America. And this is the feeling Call of True. the Night perfectly captures. Cityscapes dazzle you. This looks the like empty a vibe. streets invite you in as a gentle soundtrack soothes you in to the... Um, that's enough now. It's time to go to sleep, yeah? All those people who called me a sleepwalker, I woke up. Now I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> Wait, what, the, what is the context of that? <laughs> Every year, there's always a gem of an anime that gets stripped away of all the potential hype it could have had because it's in the jail of some streaming platform that doesn't promote it. And this year, there was no bigger tragedy than Summertime Render being locked behind Disney+. Plus. Oh, really? What do you get if Disney you cross Plus anime. with a mo Higurashi? This show, a dude returns home on an island. I didn't even know Disney Plus had anime, what? Something's off. People are acting strange. Something doesn't quite add up to the events of his friend's death, but no one wants to talk about it. There's an air of unease that something terrifying is going on behind the scenes. Then, before you can even begin to paint a picture of what horrors are really lying underneath, Whoa. he dies. That was episode one. This is the kind of show that pulls you in from its opening episode and refuses oh, to ever let cool. go. It shows us the stakes and oh, never gives us a moment to breathe. It presents you with this intriguing mystery, solves it into like a murder mystery, and gives you ten more, only to do the same with thing like time over travel? again. You're constantly on your toes, and just as soon as you think you've figured out the rules of the game, boom! It hits you with a new twist that changes everything. And what's the twist? Breast milk. It will keep you guessing, <laughs> keep you thinking, all the way up to the final episode. And the only big criticism I can lay against it is that I need to give Disney my hard-earned money to watch it. Did somebody yeah. mention the door to darkness? Uh, luckily, I, I uh, bomb it. Oh, number nine, really. One thing I've learned about the anime community is the more popular a show is, the cooler you get for calling it mid. So, here you go. True. Demon Slayer Season 2 number is nine. mid. Number nine. Way between great and bloody fantastic. And also hey, way true. up your mom. You it doesn't have the most complex characters, it doesn't have the most original plots, but whatever it doesn't have, it great makes character up for design, pure great action sequences. Hype. If actions speak louder than words, Demon Slayer is fucking screaming. The entertainment district arc reaches an audio visual I'm surprised experience this isn't few a top anime five, series but could I ever mean, match. Sure. Raising the bar for studio UFO tables already insanely high standards. When you tell UFO table that your amp goes up to eleven, they go, Yeah, that's cute, and turns theirs up to thirty. An adaptation like <laughs> this shows that even people at the top of their field can strive to improve their craft because what they've delivered is an anime with the highest level of spectacle it can get you hold your breath waiting for that one climactic moment it builds and builds and you're on the edge of your seat anticipating when that peak's gonna come and just when you think the hype can't get even higher it smashes past it to a point you ever thought it could go your mind goes blank taking in one of the most jaw-dropping visual spectacles anime has ever that seen that final fight yes yeah, when everything is said and done do you remember to take Insane. a breath again? <laughs> Cliffhanger ending too. It's great, great, insane episode. Spy family, all right. After all the non-related by blood antics I've seen in anime, I'd almost forgotten what a real family should look like. But thankfully, Spike's family was the wholesome medicine I needed to cleanse my mind once more. Even if this family is technically not related by blood. This is the latest in the X series, where weebs can never agree <laughs> yeah. whether the X is silent or not. And then there's this one guy I talked to last year that I called this Spy Multiplied by Family. Oh my god, dude. Okay, just, that guy's just trying to... If you're watching this, what the fuck? He's trying to be different. He's trying to be different.
actually to be calling quirky. the cops. Jesus. Going in, the show was touted to me as a gag anime, and I'm gonna be honest, I didn't actually find it that funny. But that didn't matter because every episode left the biggest smile on my face regardless. Watching Spy X Family reminded me of the types <laughs> of old by. school shows I'd watch with my mum and dad on a Sunday evening when we'd spend time with each other. The type of show you'd put on at Christmas that helps bring everyone together. Sometimes it's not about having a super deep interconnected plotline, but a simple story that'll brighten up your day no matter what and help you appreciate the family you have around you. Barf. Barf. Gundam. The legacy of Gundam is one of the most storied and important franchises in all of anime. But with this legacy and the sheer number Goated of iterations series. preceding it, every new Gundam comes in with the challenge of having to figure out what can this Gundam do that no other Gundam has ever done. Gay girls, innit? Gundam the Witch <laughs> oh from God. Mercury is the Gundam we've needed for the longest time. Something that wipes the slate clean for new fans to be able to jump in while not forgetting why people watched Gundam in the first place. It's hard to do a fresh take on such an old franchise, but the Witch from Mercury seems to be doing exactly that. This is no war between nations, but a war between corporations. Here is a world where profit and power mm, reign supreme. Elon Musk is having a wet dream in a corner. The politics of war <laughs> have been replaced with the politics of companies, proving that corporate like drama cyberpunk, can be just as cyberpunk. gripping if you add the right conflicts, because Gundam has never been just about the giant robot fights. All right, oh, maybe go. his number one might be. I totally forgot about Cyberpunk. Well, the giant robot fights. That, that giant might be robot one. fights are awesome. Studio Sunrise have pulled out all of their expertise to make this the best looking mecha show it can be, from the flashiest battle to the smallest details. I mean, just listen to the sound design. Now, I could have shown you some That's of its incredible cool. animation or its orgasmic music, but nobody ever thinks about sound design. And if it can get us to notice small things like this, extrapolate that to what that means for the rest of the production values. Let's just forget about the fact that there's no sounds in space, though. This is a triple A <laughs> production from top to bottom, and it isn't afraid to flaunt it every episode. The Witch from Mercury isn't just here to compete with other Gundams. It isn't just here to compete with other mechas. It's here to stand toe to toe with the best things out right now. If you're new to anime here, if you've never seen a mecha in your life and you need a reason to get into giant robots this is it Ooh. Ooh. that looks pretty insane i'm not a big mech fan i i, I was never really in, that into gundam uh, series but i mean that looks pretty good i might have to check that out what is this Every generation, we get a genre-defining show, one that fans look back on as the pinnacle of the genre at that time, that sold them on what could be so great about it. And I believe that Kaguya Summer has become just oh, that. Love is war. When I started oh, Kaguya, I, I thought it was this. just going to be some formulated gag manga. Two people that don't want to confess, they find the most convoluted roundabout way to avoid confessing, and then they don't confess. But what I didn't initially notice is that even though it seems episodic, every new gag, every new skit adds a little bit more. Piece by piece, a layer gets added to each character Character, each of the cast members it continues to build continues to add on itself and before you know it it feels like this group of dimwits have become your own friends you start to cherish every single second you get to put the show on and that's the real magic of kaguya beyond the gags beyond the antics it just becomes a joy to spend time with all of them you fall in love with this ensemble so this season when it follows through and delivers through the build-up we will promise it results in one of the most satisfying climaxes you can find in romance oh Dragon shit Ball Z, okay naruto Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan. These are all generational anime people talk about as the shows that introduced them into anime, but once you get past the shonen mega hits, you'll find these other shows fans look back on that served as their definitive gateways into other genres. Without Haruki, I would have never got into high school anime. Code Geass stood as that mecha show every non-mecha fan watched. I that's know me. exactly yeah, <laughs> what generation you're from if Kaon introduced you to the slice of life moe genre, and years from now, Kaguya Summer is going to be the anime this new generation generation of fans reminisce about when they talk about how they got wow. into romance oh wow that's a, wow those are big words okay anime i need to check that ser series out high praise oh here we go number five okay all right Wow. Chainsaw Man came into this year with an almost impossible amount of hype to meet true but did it rise up to the challenge and prove us all wrong with this first season no 
But what we got was still pretty damn good. It's been a long time since I've seen an anime explode onto the scene this hard and this fast. For the inconceivable expectations it had, the craziest things that it almost stepped up to the plate to meet them. In the highly popular, highly competitive scene of safe, marketable shonen action shows, I don't even know how, the, how, man, how this the series got so much and hype. Fuck you, I'm gonna grab some titties. It's savage. It's out there. It's a show called Chainsaw Man, and it gave us a man that's a chainsaw. What the fuck do we have to complain about? The hype this show produced could only ever really be matched by how horny it made the fan base. You got power fans. Now here's their perfect girl. I too like women who don't shower, don't wipe, smells, and leave their <laughs> lungs unflushed. Oh god. Uh, Why yes, how mm. could you tell I play Super Smash Brothers? Then you have the Kobeni fans. <laughs> oh, oh Kobeni, yes, hell yeah. My wife was suffering. Isn't she so adorable? <laughs> then there's Himeno fans. Oh god. Then there's Makuma. And the Makuma Never before Sims. has a character been so perfectly designed, so unequivocally unmatched, so incomparably unparalleled at eliciting the horny. If No Not November was an impossible dungeon, she would be the final boss standing at the end of it. Every word, every action, every line she utters got you going like, My mind's telling me me yeah, <laughs> my body, my body is telling me yeah. all levels except physical i am a wolf i am a wolf <laughs> the real question at the end of this all is can mappa carry on this insane quality they've given us with this adaptation into future seasons because it might not have met the hype this time but after that last episode i mean this first season was a lot it had a I lot had of one setting thought up that engulfed my mind over everything else we ain't seen nothing yet true what's left bleach mob psycho Ooh. Oh. If you know me, you know oh, I don't like Slice of Life. I don't like Moe shows. I don't like cute girls doing cute things. Bochi so the believe rock. me when I say that Bochi the Rock, a Moe Slice of Life show where cute girls do cute things, is something really special. What makes this so special? Is it a music anime? Yeah, girls, isn't it? Wait, wait. Not this time. Bochi is a show about this awkward gremlin who joins a band in hopes that she can get over her crippling social anxiety oh, I've, and I've achieve the popularity this. she never had. Is this one they go to America? Thinking, wait, is, I've is seen this before. One? It was called Komi-san or what? Tomote or Hitori Bochi. Yes. What sets Bochi apart is just how above and beyond it goes with this animation to convey these she just like me for real moments. Characters go in and off model. Oh Animators just fucking give up at times. People start glitching in and out of reality. You may or may not have done the exact same things that Bochi does, but you feel her in your fucking soul. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was worried that this was going to be a one-trick pony. Turns out, it's a ten-trick pony in a farm of a hundred ponies. When you think you get the joke, when you think you know what's coming, the animators hit you with something completely new that conveys this terrifyingly relatable feeling in a way only animation can do. This made me laugh more than any other show this year. It wasn't gut-busting laughter, it was more like, <laughs> Oh god, it felt exactly the same way. God damn it, Bochi, why are you doing this to me? This is triggering my fire fly response. Get out of my mind. Get out, get out, get out! <laughs> yeah, big mood. If there is a single introvert bone in your body, something in here will drag out a core memory you've buried deep in the recesses of your mind. Like that intrusive thought that hits you at 3 a.m. And God, I didn't even talk about the music. I recently said that this was everything I was hoping k would be. Because while, yes, a lot of this is slice of life moe, you motherfuckers are getting shit done. <laughs> These girls don't Damn. be fucking around when they it comes shredded. to their music. They have their goals and they're gonna go out and achieve it. But she may not be able to form a coherent conversation, but every little step she takes to overcoming that, every time she stepped up and tears it up on stage, made me want to jump up and go, yes! That's my girl! This was my <laughs> biggest surprise of 2022, bar none. In a season of heavy hitters, Bleach, Chainsaw Man, Spy X Family, Bochi the Rock awkwardly waltzed in, grabbed the mic and went... <laughs> Oh, Cyberpunk, let's go. Cyberpunk 2077 has gone down as one of the most disastrous launches in gaming history. Years of anticipation and build-up led to the release of a broken, unfinished game that would take an equal amount of years to fix all the bugs that it had. 2077 became a joke, a meme among the gaming community about how not to launch a game, and the biggest praise I can give to Cyberpunk Edge Runners is that it was so good, the anime almost made everyone forgive what happened to the game. True. 
Made everyone forget about it. Made everyone re return to Cyberpunk. Nowhere, this dropped and introduced weebs to the insane world of Night City. We weren't given another squeaky clean safe anime. This was some hardcore dick and butt hyper violent I fucked your mom kind of show. And god damn was it awesome. It hits <laughs> you with a story going at full throttle from episode one and never takes its foot off the gas. You'll look for a moment to pause and catch your breath and while you're waiting you'll realize the credits to the final episode are rolling. This was the anime studio. It was a perfect. Yeah, I was gonna. No I was literally about to say it was a perfect series for Studio Trigger to anime. We realized they wanted until now. Even for a team of decorated veterans in the industry, this felt like they had upped their game. They felt refreshed, revitalized. Every scene oozing with style. Every frame burning with the passion of everyone working on it. And it's impossible for this excitement not to get transferred over to the viewer. This is how you do a video game tie-in, and all it took was emotionally scarring the collective cyberpunk community <laughs> with a single song. Oh god. <laughs> so sad. Oh, here we go. Yes. When Mob Psycho season three was announced, I remember saying Perfect to myself, final season. Eh, we don't need another season of Mob. It was a perfect final season. Season two was an action-packed masterpiece. Perfect combining ending. some of the best animation you could ever find with masterful character writing the series didn't have before. And while I don't think season three reached those same heights, it was one that was surely It wasn't as action-packed as the other seasons. This closed the final chapter to Mob's character and everyone around him. In a sense, this felt like a season-long epilogue. While I wondered where the story could go after season two cleared up all its plot points and defeat the big evil season three took a step back and went how do we give these characters the send-offs they deserve reagan the man so full of bullshit he can sell hamon to a stan user <laughs> ends the series in the most honest way possible dimple ritsu hanazawa and most importantly mob for all the flashy fight scenes it showed that its true heart lies in the characters it taught us how to accept ourselves through the eyes of mob's journey and ended his story in the most perfect way possible studio bones can finally take a bow for the work they've done here. From start to finish, Mob has felt like a passion project that has pushed the boundaries of animation to its limits and beyond. This is the kind of adaptation everyone only dreams of. And now that we're saying goodbye, whatever your favorite season was, it's hard not to feel like all of Mob Psycho has cemented itself as a modern classic we won't ever forget. True. Oh, so number one's Bleach then? Oh, yeah. Made in Abyss. Oh my god, Made in Oh, he didn't even he didn't even list list Blitch, Bleach, Blitch. Made in Abyss. I haven't seen the season 2, but I I read the manga so I know what happens in season 2 and I know that it's fucking amazing. Until the soul it's around. such a sad when story. When I put on a happy movie, I know to come out it's so dark to feel and fucked happy. up. When I listen to a sad song, I know to expect coming out feeling a bit sad. But sometimes I encounter a it's piece such of an media amazing that series. leaves me with an emotion that is utterly indescribable and that's how made in the best season two left me it's been five years since the first made in abyss and now the cat's out of the bag we know this isn't a cutesy happy show bad things happen people probably children are going to suffer and you're going to need a good hug by the end of it all true and even knowing this i was not prepared for the experience this was gonna give me this is no longer simply just a her story oh my god dude it's sad show so or a tragic dark show before the rules are more simple you go down deep and maybe you encounter a really dangerous animal or some crazy evil person, but now the terrors you encounter cease to follow any logic you're familiar with. We wander around in this non Eucidian world where the laws of the universe are governed. The world building in this series is so good, too. Man. By different it's systems, so the mysteries of creative. the world refuse to give up its secrets. Eldritch horrors lurk around every corner, and your mind can only attempt to comprehend the nightmares you uncover behind them. Made in the Abyss 2 contains some of the most haunting things I've ever seen in anime, but none of it was because of some simple violence or gore but ideas and imagery that disturbs me to my core honestly Yet somehow through all this there's a gentleness to its story for all its terror this is a hauntingly beautiful tale it gives it's you like hope. about trying to find light in the darkness in a place of hopelessness then smashes it all away terrifies you without scaring you and hits you with the soundtrack that makes your soul just wail <laughs>
more people need to see this series, man. Honestly, and it, it kind of sucks that it's it, it's not really on any streaming services. Not well, not it's, it, it is on, but it's not on any of the big ones. So that's kind of why it's not as popular as it should be. I think. I had I an incredibly hard time picking my favorite anime this year. Any one of the top six could have taken the spot, but the reason I settled on Made in Abyss is because it's given me an experience like no other. Unlike everything else I've talked about today, this has grown beyond something I would wholeheartedly recommend. In the same way, I don't really recommend a movie like Requiem <laughs> for a Dream, because it's not something you go into to enjoy, but if you're brave enough, it's an unfathomably powerful experience that will haunt you for for years to come. <laughs> Made in Abyss allows you to find beauty in the horrific, hope in the despair. You watch this nightmare unfold through an ethereal lens. It rips your heart to shreds, then gives you a warm hug and tells you everything's gonna be alright. You go on this ride that tears your soul apart, only to come out smiling at the other end. And only after it's all over, and you sit beside yourself to process the journey of emotions you just felt, is there only one word that can encapsulate it all? Wow. <laughs> God damn, dude, what a great series. Holy shit. Hey guys, hope you're having a great 2023 so far. I'm surprised didn't even yeah, That was all of my favorite anime from 2022. And I want to give a huge 2020. Yeah, interesting. I, 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 like, I, I like the list. I respect it. I respect it. Not made Abyss gave me the biggest feeling of adventure that I ever. Honestly, yeah, honestly, a really insane series.